Here in example two, we have a balloon that's used for underwater salvage. It's inflated to 50 liters at a depth of 200 feet, where the pressure is 6.89 atmospheres and the temperature is 3 degrees C. The balloon rises to the surface where it's 22 degrees C and 0.988 atmospheres. What is the new volume of the balloon? Well, in this problem, they're giving us two sets of conditions. We start off with this balloon inflated underwater, and then the balloon comes up to the surface where it experiences a different pressure and temperature, and so that will give us a new volume. So this is looking like a combined gas law equation. Now, since I'm running out of room, I'm gonna write down that equation up top here. The equation says P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. So we've identified the equation that we need to use, and let's look for a given and our unknown. I'll do that in the form of a variable list over here. Let's say that the one conditions, P1, V1, and T1, apply when the balloon is down underwater. So P1 would be 6.89 atmospheres. And V1 is 50 liters, that's its volume down under the water. And T1 is three degrees C, but don't ever stop at a degree C in a gas law problem. Immediately add 273, because you've got to convert it to Kelvin, no matter what units you're using. So that becomes 276 Kelvin. Um, then it says, that uh, the balloon rises to the surface. So we'll have our new conditions. We'll have our P2, our V2, and our T2. And at the surface, let's see, the pressure at the surface is 0.988 atmospheres. The volume at the surface is our unknown. That's what we're asked to find in the temperature is 22 degrees C, but once again, we'll want to add 273 to that, and I believe that gives us uh, 295 Kelvin for the temperature. Okay, now I'm going to run out of room on this problem because there's a lot of numbers in this equation, so I want to point out um, something that really trips up people when they're doing calculations with the combined gas law. Having the variables down in the denominator just cause all sorts of, of problems for people. So the first thing I recommend we do is, is we're, we're solving this equation is basically get rid of the denominator. We can do this thing called cross multiplying. When you have two um, fractions that are equal to each other, you can multiply um, you can cross multiply and have two things that are equal to each other. So if I take P1 V1 times T2, so I'm multiplying everything that's on that branch of this X, that's going to be equal to everything multiplied together on the other branch of that X, which is going to be T1 P2 V2. It gets real confusing with the ones and the twos here. So do your best to keep all of those straight. That's where people most often make mistakes, is, is confusing the ones and the twos. Hopefully I don't do that before this example is over. Um, let's see, the thing we are looking for is V2. So if I'm gonna get V2 by itself, I'm gonna need to divide both sides of the equation by T1 and P2 to make those cancel out. If I do it to the right-hand side, I've got to do it to the left-hand side as well. So uh, cleaning that up and rewriting it down below so I can start plugging some numbers in. V2 will be equal to P1, V1, T2, all divided by T1 and P2. All right, let's talk units for just a moment before we put those numbers in. When we do combine gas law, temperature must be in Kelvin. So unit-wise, looks like we're good. Our temperatures are in Kelvin. When it comes to pressure and volume, it does not matter what the units are as long as they are the same on both sides. We have a P1 and a P2 that are both in atmospheres, so it looks like our pressure units are good. 
we only have one volume and we're looking for the other one, so our answer will fall out in the units that we use for volume, which will be liters. So our final answer, V2, should have units of liters. And again, I'm going to run out of room, so I'm not going to put the units into this calculation. So when I go to plug the numbers in, for P1, I'm going to plug in 6.89. For V1, I'm going to plug in 50 liters. For T2, now I'm switching from the ones to the two, so make sure you go all the way down to the bottom to get T2, which is 295 Kelvin. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have T1 and P2. T1 was 276 Kelvin, and P2 was 0.988 atmospheres. All right, now I just need to run those through the calculator. Um, remember, if you do it without parentheses down in the denominator, you've got to hit the divide key um, for both numbers. Uh, that's how I prefer to do things. Um, the, what your calculator understands if parentheses are not involved is that the times key means the numbers in the top and the divide key means the numbers are in the bottom. So if I'm going to run this in my calculator, I'm going to take 6.89 times 50 times 295 divided by 276. And now to tell it that this last number is in the bottom, I'm going to hit divide again, divide by 0.988. And again, that's all without parentheses. And in the end, I end up for my calculator with a volume of 373 liters.